Dr. Victor pointed out that the public's shift away from what he called, this is what he called it, a Puritan complex, was enhancing the power of three major sales appeals. The desire for comfort, the desire for luxury, and the desire for prestige. That's pride, loving self, right? This is an attitude quite in contrast to the teaching of God's Word. Because the Word says, if we have food and covering, with these we shall be content. 1 Timothy 6 eight will be satisfied if we have our basic needs met. Now I got to tell you something. A, a large flat screen television in every room of your house, including the bedroom and kitchen, is not a need. We've been convinced basically that it is. That's the consumerism, and that's what Victor said could be created in man, right? Much of the Western Church is not only discontent today. It's con I'm talking about the church now, right? It is cultivating that dissatisfaction in its members because it has learned well from the scriptures. It has learned that feeding the flesh will fill the pews, right? That's the nature of man that desires to get rather than the spiritual nature of man that has been trained to give. It is more blessed to give than to receive. I mean, isn't that what Jesus said in John 6? He said, he answered the crowds and said, Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Because they were getting the natural stuff. Not because of the spiritual, not because he was the king of kings, not because he was the lord of lords, but because they were getting the bread. You can turn on, and I, 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 don't, I don't even like to do this, but I mean, you know, I get, I'm an early riser, I get up in the morning and sometimes I'll turn on the television and flick through the stations and I see preacher after preacher, evangelist after evangelist, telling people about how they can become rich. You know, just buy my, buy my Pentecostal holy water and, you know, anoint your wallet or, or do this or do that. Or, and it's all about, you know, it says set your mind on the things above. But if you listen to so many of these preachers, so many of these teachers, so many of these so-called ministers, you will find all they are doing is getting people to focus on the world and the things of the world and trying to convince them that they that they God wants them to have it. And if they don't have it, then what are you doing? You're not content. They're going to be dissatisfied because you're being told you're supposed to have it. You know what you're supposed to have? Jesus said, deny yourself. Jesus said, die to yourself. You know what you need? You need that closer walk with him. Not long ago, pretty recently, I was invited to, to speak at a church, preach at a church in Central Florida, in Winter Park, Central Florida. And just before I got up to speak, the pastor's wife got up and she said, well, you know, before, before Alan comes up, we're going to pray for everybody's needs. And I stood up and I said, I'd like you to just hold off on that. I said, we'll do that afterwards. Because if, you, if you're going to pray for something, first of all, you need to pray in faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. You need to hear the word. And I said, the other thing is, my experience is that most Christians don't know what they need. That you think that you need a new house, a new job, a new this, a new that. You know what you need? Know the song? Just a closer walk with thee. What you need is just a closer walk with with God. And all the rest takes care of it. You know, I, I said the, the Beatitudes, this is the teaching. All the rest of the Sermon on the Mount is the commentary. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they shall be satisfied. Because Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All the rest will be added unto you. God knows. Before you can think, before you can ask, he knows exactly what you need. And the promise is, back to Philippians again, that he will meet, he will supply all of your needs through his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You don't have to convince God to love you. You don't have to convince God to take care of your needs. All you have to do is walk hand in hand with him. Focus on him. Everything else takes care of itself. That's why so many Christians are dissatisfied, malcontent, because you're so focused on the world and the things of the world. Those people who were following Jesus because they ate from the loaves and got filled, those are the very same ones, or so many of them, in that sixth chapter of John, 
Go read John 6, from verses 60 to 66. John 6, 6, 6. Is that a coincidence? And it says, many of those who were his disciples walked away from him. You know why? Because his word was too difficult. We need, we need to have difficult words. As iron sharpens iron, that's grating. You know, the words of Jesus Christ, they're going to grate against your flesh. But they're going to sharpen your spirit. That should be our great desire, is that closer walk with Jesus. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long. As I walk, let me walk close to Thee.